I've been wanting to make my own model parts for some time. In some previous videos, you've watched me talk about my little 3D printer, but up until now, I've been at the mercy of other designers to model the parts I wanted. I recently came across a really powerful but easy to learn modeling software that I thought I'd talk a little bit about in this video. In only a few short weeks, I've begun to learn how to model parts like this 132nd Supermarine Seafire Mark 47 nose conversion. I'll walk you through some quick steps on how you too can start to model parts just like this. Welcome back to Flying S Models. I appreciate you tuning back into the channel. The software that I'm using is called Moment of Inspiration, or MOI for short. You can download a free 90-day trial version from the link that I'll post in the video description below. You can see upon opening the software that it has a pretty simple and intuitive GUI. You can work in multi-view mode or switch back and forth between front, top, and side views. I won't provide a full tutorial here, but I'll go over some of the basic functions that I use to create these parts. You can find some really helpful tutorials online. To get started, I'll drop in a set of scale plans to the right side view. Just click the View button and then Image. Click Add Image and select the file you want to add. You can drop it in to whichever view you would like and then scale it accordingly. Once the image is added, it's just a matter of tracing the parts and then using the functions in the software to do all the rest of the heavy lifting. I first trace the side profile using the Polygon tool. The top and bottom profiles will serve as the rails when I sweep the cross sections to create the solid nose section. You don't have to be completely spot on when you trace it as you can always come back and use the show points button to highlight the curve and adjust the points to get the shape that matches the profile exactly. When I was happy with the profiles, it was time to trace the cross sections. You don't have to sweep through every cross section. For this C fire, I just selected cross sections 5 and 12. I trace those out again using the polygon tool. I don't worry about the valve covers as I'll come back in at a later step and add those using the same sweep feature. You want to create closed curves in order to have a solid object versus a surface when you sweep the profile rails. So I just add a vertical line by snapping it to the ends of the curves and then click the Join button. You can see in the upper right that the two curves now say Closed Curve. This is what you want to see. Sometimes you'll have to use the Trim button to make sure you trim off the excess length of some of those curves. When I have both cross sections complete, I rotate them 90 degrees so that I can align them to the rails in the appropriate spots on the plans. This takes a little time, working in the various views in order to make sure that they are positioned correctly and in line with the sweep rails. Just use the show points function to align the endpoints to those rails. When I had things the way I wanted, I highlighted both cross sections and then clicked the sweep button. You can see that the software asks you to select the rails, so I just select the top and bottom profile curves. You can right click or click done and you'll see the solid that is produced. Now if you look at the top view, you can see that the sweep pretty much created a solid that is straight when viewed from the top. This isn't quite correct, so let's undo that and add a scaling rail. Using the polygon tool again, I'll add a curvature that represents a more accurate top profile. I'll then move this into place along the cross sections. 
Now when I sweep, I'll select the Pick Scaling Rail option and then highlight that scaling curve that I just added. You can see now that the sweep function has created a solid that has the correct top profile. I want a hollow fuselage to save resin and also to save on weight. It will also allow me to add the exhaust from the inside and create a more realistic look. To hollow the fuselage out, I'll use the shell button and pick a wall thickness of 0.2. This creates a shell from the solid nose section that we had before. Now you notice that I didn't go all the way to the front cross section number one when I swept the nose section. That's because there's a transition to the circular spinner and the chin intake. These allow us to use another command to create these features. I'll create the cross section just after the intake at station number two by using the Boolean difference button to cut the solid at that station. I draw a straight line at the station and then position it to the left of the nose section. I select the base object, in this case the nose section, and then the cutting object, in this case the vertical line. The software then trims the base object with the line and I can delete away the line and the front part of the nose. Now I add the circular cross section at station number one using the circle button and align it in place. I also create the cross section closed curve by copying the edge at station number two and adding a vertical line and joining the two curves together. Now I can click the loft button to create the front section and then join the two objects to create a single solid. Now here I have already added the valve cover, but I'm going to show you the basic methodology I used. I trace the valve cover in the right side view. In this case, however, I'll draw a random curve to show the process. With the curve drawn, I position it in place next to the nose half. I use the project button to project that curve onto the surface. You can see that it projects it through the surface on the outside and inside of the nose section. I'll delete the projection curve as well as the inside curve and only work with the curve on the outside of the nose. I'll add a curve to represent the valve cover cross section using the polygon tool. I'll also add a straight line to use as a trim tool to cut the projected curve into two separate curves to serve as sweep rails. Once I have them separated, I just use the sweep tool again to sweep the cross section across the rails in order to create the raised valve cover feature. I can then join this to the nose section to create a single solid using the Boolean Union button. To create the slot for the exhaust, I just draw a rectangle and use it as a cut tool using the Boolean difference command again. Now I'll walk you through how I created the chin intake opening. This will help highlight another feature within the MOI software. I just draw the intake curve and use the extrude button to create a solid and then boolean that away from the solid nose, just like I had done with the exhaust openings. I'll use the spinner attachment lug to demonstrate this. I draw a circle on the nose plate and then click the extrude button. I extrude a rod from that circle, and then I use the Boolean feature to either cut a hole in the nose or join the rod to the nose in order to create an attachment lug. Since in this case, I ended with the Boolean union function to attach the rod, I'll use another straight line and the Boolean trim command to cut the rod in half. It's always good to work in half sections and then just mirror the one half to create the complete solid. Now I'll show some of the other components and walk through really quickly how I made those. For the spinner, I just traced the profile 
attaching it to the end of the front of the circular nose cross section. I use the revolve button and pick the axis and let the software revolve the spinner 360 degrees to create the solid spinner. Now I can use the same Boolean features in order to create the female hole for the attachment lug. To create the exhaust, I just use the same sweep function, sweeping a circular profile along the exhaust profile rail. Let's talk about the prop blade and highlight one more powerful feature with MOI. I'll simply trace the prop profile and create some sweep rails. I'll now draw and mirror an airfoil curve that I can sweep along the prop profile rails. I'll need to rotate it 90 degrees before sweeping it, just like I had done with the fuselage cross sections. After sweeping it, we can use the twist function in MOI to give some pitch to the prop. You can select whichever pitch you like and let the software do the rest. Now I'll highlight one last feature of the MOI software, the Array tool. I'll use the Array tool to create multiple prop blades around the spinner centerline axis. I just align the single prop to the spinner at the desired location. I then click the array and circular buttons and then pick the axis. The software lays out however many prop blades you want. You can change it and see the results. In this case, I only need three on each of the front and rear spinner sections. Now I'll align everything to see the finished result. So there you have the finished model, at least to this point. Now it's just a matter of exporting each of the solids out as an STL file and importing those into my 3D printer software. Once I have them in the printer software, I can scale and position them before adding the print supports. Now I can slice, save, and send them over to the printer and see the results of our design work. After washing and curing and removing those supports, I can plug the parts together to show the completed nose section. I'm still working on adding the panel line and rivet detail, but I wanted to make a quick video to hopefully inspire those who haven't tried solid modeling to give it a go. It took me a while to find a simple and easy to use software, and MOI certainly foots the bill for me. I hope you'll give solid modeling a try as a way to create custom parts that will take your models and your modeling skills to the next level. I appreciate you tuning back in to the Flying S Models channel and hope that you found this video informative and helpful. Leave me some feedback letting me know what you like and didn't like about this particular feature. I'll see you next time.